Okay, so we're on. Yeah. So I don't remember the email. You okay. Want, you want to tell uh, me a little bit? Yeah, I uh, I emailed and well, I saw your interview with Rick on that Buddha uh, at the gas pump, and um, so resonated with all that you said, and I am a student of A Course in Miracles. I'm not sure if you've heard of that, um, but it has the same message. And basically, I believe that the world is a dream. Uh, and I, I see that visually. I had a spiritual awakening, uh, I think it's about eight years ago now, where my vision changed. And I, uh, I guess I would describe it as being with the one mind instead of the body's eyes made up and it shows me that that we're all one and that um, forms are just images um, but I still experience duality and um, so I feel um, initially there was a lot of conflict because I it scared me I, I didn't have any belief in what happened uh, I guess I was probably agnostic. I just didn't spend a lot of time thinking about it or know another and then I have this experience that sort of was telling me I wasn't what I thought I was and nothing was what I thought I was. And so I spent a, a, lot, a number of years very frightened. Um, I have young, I have boys also and I, and I think being a mom and being in that role initially scary to think that that wasn't real um, and so I since, since that time I have I found the Course in Miracles and sort of was able to make sense of everything understand it and I've let go of a lot of fear but <clears throat> still and then uh, maybe not so much conflict but changing back and forth between Identification with my story and uh, resistance and just experiencing duality and then knowing that that is <laughs> really true. So when I heard you talk, I was I liked that I've heard a lot of spiritual speakers sort of go only so far and then. And I think that's maybe where I am, where you realize the world isn't real, but you still are attached to it or clinging to it or trying to make it real somehow. I felt like you were inviting listeners to sort of let go fully if they were ready. So I decided to. That's good. The, the invitation is for you to see from within. You can hear? Yes. And my volume is a little low, but I can The mind has to be clear, because if it's not clear, it gets confused. And part of the mind is confusion. So the, the experience of who you truly are which is absolutely still, it has nothing to do with the world. It alone exists. And when the mind comes back, because of what they call vasanas, habits, it's dormant latencies that are charged till energetically. So when they come into the surface, the thought has energy and it demands one's attention and then action follows. So this is what happens even if someone awakens to who they are and the next moment the, mind, the thought appears and it demands the attention of the mind 
and then you identify with their thought and you believe it to be real and then you react to either thoughts or sensation, bodily sensation. So the mind has to be clear in order to continue to undo the beliefs, the ideas, the thoughts, the concepts. Yes? And then also when fear rises or when there, when there is doubt, to know how to discriminate the fear, to know how to discriminate the doubt, to doubt the doubt itself, because who you are has no doubt, because it has no thought. So only a thought can doubt about something. The experience of who you are in that experience when there is silence, there is no doubt. All there is is peace. And I, I have a great moment with that, and I guess that, that is the, what, what feels difficult, is that I have moments of it, and then I uh, back in that. It, it's no problem. It, it just, just the difficulty can only be because you have an idea that the thoughts should not appear anymore or there shouldn't be any identification with the thoughts, which this is a negative thought into itself because if you have a thought or I have a thought or anybody that the, the mind shouldn't identify with thoughts, when it identifies, it reacts to the identification. So it perpetuates the, identi the false identity like that. That's a trick of the mind. This is why it's really key to see how the mind and it's working, how the, the phantom, which we call mind, plays itself out. So one can work with it in a relaxed manner and not react to it. Because when you react to something, you cannot work with it skillfully. You cannot examine it because you're scared of it, you don't want it, then it turns to be an enemy. And instead of, it's to look at the thoughts as friends, friends we get to know. Friends we come to meet them with understanding and clarity. So the thoughts have to be looked as friends, not as enemy. This is the habit is to, when I don't want particular thoughts, I want to get rid of them. So now when they appear, they don't ask my, my permission. Thoughts appear and disappear and when the thought appear and I don't like it I start to react to it I don't want it I want to get rid of it then I perpetuate energetically I feed energy into these thoughts so I actually want to be free of them and unknowingly I sustain them I um, I agree with that and I I have sort of come to that same conclusion and so I what I find myself doing is trying to allow myself to feel uh, whatever uncomfortable feelings come up. Sometimes if I if I know I'm identifying with a thought that's, you know, not what I want because I feel badly, I'll sit down and meditate and try and let myself <coughs> feel it fully um, in hopes <laughs> it's, there's that. It's good. Yeah, but you, I, it it's just, not enough. It makes me how it happens again and again, even though I feel like I'm opening myself up to it. Because it's not it's, enough. What's that? It's, it's not, not enough. enough. I'll explain why. Let me speak a little bit about the nature of the mind so there's clarity. And the invitation is for you to look and examine it and see it from within for yourself. Yes? So, few things. First of all, if you look at thoughts and emotions, emotion is only a physical reaction in the body to a belief, to a thought I identify with, yes? So the moment there's emotion, there's an identification. Because emotion is only in the body as a physical sensation, all it takes is one moment to be aware of it without reacting to that sensation. Means even if you just breathe into the sensation 
and you feel the sensation synchronized with the breath, that moment the mind cannot resist the sensation because it is with the breath. That's enough. Once you are aware of the sensation, it didn't label it in any way because a sensation without a label is pure. Yeah? So it's not emotion, it's not sadness, it's not anger, it's neither of this, this, yeah? These are labeling of the mind. So once you're aware of the sensation, you can use the breath. Now, I call it, this is the, the, first, the first floor of the house. Now you have to go to the second floor, which is the thoughts. Because the thoughts are the ones who cause this feeling, this sensation, you have to check which thought were you identifying with, if you can. Because not always you can know the thought that caused you this emotion. Because it's stored in a storage, what the sages call cheat. It's a storage of memory that has all the memory of the whole universe. And it has memory of the stories that are personal as well. Yes? So sometimes when there is emotion, we cannot trace what thoughts are. And that's fine, then you just observe the emotion, the sensation as it is, and then you go to the thoughts and you work with the thoughts, not even looking which thought caused it. Means, because that's when you go to the second floor upstairs. If you don't leave the body, and you stay even present with the body, the body cannot take you to, to eternity. The, the being of who you are is eternity. It has no beginning, no end. It's changeless awareness. The body, the moment it is born, from that moment, its direction is only to death. Right? So how can we go using the body to experience who we are, which is eternity. We can't. We have to go to the second floor and work with the thoughts and go to the starting point where the thoughts arise from. And the thoughts arise from who you truly are. The beingness of who you are, which is absolutely still. So you want to follow the thoughts to the, the beginning. Yes? And because it is your true nature, if you can see the thoughts enough and you work with them, then the, who you are just reveals itself, by itself. So when you go to the second floor, when you are emotional and now you work with the thoughts, then you left the body. Once you left the body, you are more inwardly in. And you're working now on the subtle, so you experience being more light. Because the heaviness that we feel from sadness is because it is the body identification. It's in the physical realm. When the thought is not in the physical realm, it's on the subtle. Yes? So now you work with the thoughts. And with negativity, a very simple way you can do it is a phrase and a, and a question. A phrase and a question and it, has, it can be spontaneous. I'll give examples so you and everyone who listens can actually put it into test and experience it for themselves. So we start. I identify with a thought. I don't maybe know what it is. And there is a bodily sensation and I label it sadness. I stop for a moment and I feel it where it is in the body and emotions tend to be from the hips up to the head and the hands and uh, hands. We don't tend to feel emotion so much in our toes or pinky, yeah? We, we don't. It's mainly from the hips up, yes? Yeah? A lot of chest. <laughs> huh? Chest. Yeah, chest. I experience my heavy. That's right. Resistance, sadness. Yes. So now, and all of it coming to the surface to free itself, because everything that is trapped 
it is has a yearning to free itself so it comes to the surface to free itself if you don't resist it it frees itself if you resist it you sustain it so now you don't even be don't have to be concerned do I do I sustain it now or no leave it alone just know that all it takes is to be just present with it for a moment in an instant and just connect the breath with the sensation until you feel it breathing with the same rhythm with the breath expanding and con contracting expanding yes once you experience it then you leave the sensation alone and you go to the thoughts and now you start with the negativity I shouldn't I shouldn't experience this sensation is it true and you don't answer this this is sadness is it true I should be beyond this experience is it true this is a negative sensation is it true I shouldn't have resistance in my mind is it true and and you go on and on spontaneously you stay with the thoughts like that so it's a, a phrase negativity and a question is it true you just question that thought because that brings a light into the thought yes so you don't even need to answer you just see it internally so now as what happens the mind tends gets to be concentrated when you concentrate because we have only one thought at a time you are not aware of the body you left it alone yeah it's like sitting and you you observe the sensation suddenly you have thoughts and you start dreaming you left the sensation except it didn't bring you clarity so when you work with the thoughts like that you left the bodily sensation so you didn't ignore you were fully aware of it there was no resistance and then you left it to do its own course because now you you concentrate with the mind as the mind gets concentrated then what happens the there is the mind is mentally sharpening and active there is no mental reaction yes so far it's clear yeah I wasn't sure initially what you meant by staying with the thought but you're saying you you question you the thought. you literally it's concentrate it like a phrase and a question and you move to the next and a question and you do it for as long as you can concentrate it will it clears a lot of negativity like this mm -hmm. it's very simple yet effective to clean negativity from the system because I like, I like the idea that you don't have to sit and stew in the feeling because I think that's what I was doing trying to be open to it and uh, but just that it takes really a moment of true uh, feeling and yeah. connecting it just a moment of presence that's all that it takes what happens if you don't the mind out of habit reacts to the sensation so people think they sit in the presently with the sensation and just for a moment and most of it they react to it so unconsciously they feed the energy and then the cause of the, sen the sensation the bodily sensation was the beliefs anyway the thoughts so Right. let's go and work with the thoughts and then it's you suddenly on the subtle closer to the source of light which is you to the beingness of who you are okay and and that's very effective for negativity and negativity is common there is no problem with that it just thoughts yes that out of habit I think that I am thinking them and that they are mine and I identify like 
this is my possession not realizing that I actually don't have any relationship with this thought because I am the silent awareness that never moves so this is one thing with emotion that is very easy just one thing to be aware that can be a trap is don't get attached to a future outcome when you you work with the thoughts what does that was one of my questions um, because I do struggle with letting go and just um, trying to go with the flow and and let I call it spirit guide uh, my life or um, one second. I know that thoughts do create the physical form so how much should I be trying to think one second let's positive things let, let, or having affirmations that let's you know, stop one friends. second Rebecca what's that let's stop one second okay mm. you see this belief that the thought create the physical yes. is a scary thought yes it is <laughs> and if you don't question this is it true then you might believe that it is because what happens people overlook or the mind overlooks and I ask them what's more real the objective world or the thoughts It appears that the identity what's more real are the thoughts than the objects which if we would comp you're trying to reach is currently unavailable. Please leave a message after the beep.